Thanks for joining us today. Uh, excited to tell you guys some more about what we've been up to with AWS and uh, the future of novel based, uh, novel evidence based medicine, I guess I would argue is maybe here, uh, but I'll share a little bit about how we're working with healthcare institutions to achieve that. Um, we start with a fundamental belief um, at a conference like this, uh, a lot of talk about data. Um, I think over the last 15 years, we've done a good job of creating and assembling a lot of data, but I think where we're stumbling as industry a bit is in that last five yards. So how do we get great data to actually be converted to great insight or great evidence? Um, and our mission is to accelerate the generation of actionable evidence to improve healthcare outcomes for everyone. And from our perspective, um, there's a big problem out there that I think we're all trying to touch on some level, but sort of staggering when you think about it. Only about 14% of daily medical decisions have any high quality evidence behind them. So the rest of the time, what are we doing? We're extrapolating from imperfect evidence from clinical trials that excluded our patients, or we're uh, using the art of medicine to sort of make the best decision you can. Um, the reason that that's the case is we don't run enough clinical trials. Of course, we'd love it if we ran more, but even the ones we run, most of those exclude most of the patients, including 70% uh, of those with comorbidities. So we're guiding medicine based on trials that don't include our patients. And that leaves us with this challenge of how do we actually create evidence for care? So let's keep those two thoughts, right? We got a whole bunch of data and not a lot of evidence. And how can we change that? At the same time, there are some positives, right? One, there's plenty of healthcare data. Even if it's a bit siloed, it's largely now in the cloud, in an AWS cloud server somewhere with compute available. And that's great news because we have the ability to build applications that can open up that evidence. Um, and there's the challenge that creating evidence is hard um, and sometimes lacks transparency, accuracy, and quality. So what can we do about that? And really with Atropos, that's where we live. And I, I think about it with this analogy. Whether you're a provider deciding what care to give a patient, you're an insurance company deciding what care to pay for or cover through an ACO contract or through your own uh, medical and formulary positions, or you're a life science company trying to get a drug approved or even reimbursed. Even if you're a patient in this market trying to decide what would I use my out-of-pocket payment for, evidence is how we decide. It's not just data, it's publication grade, high quality evidence that governs how medicine works. And in this analogy, the way to think about Atropos is we create evidence out of that data at high speed and high quality. This is a view of our solution. Um, and our core technology is called Geneva Operating System. It stands for uh, Generative Evidence Acceleration Operating System. This actually lives in the cloud and it's a federated technology. So we're available today in AWS Marketplace. If you have a healthcare data uh, mart or healthcare data stack, this can install directly there. What that means is that we're not risking uh, moving data around. We're not risking HIPAA. Whatever the current setup that you have is, the data should stay where it is. I'm not sure we should be moving data around all the time. Let's leave it where it is. So now that it's there, by installing the Atropos applications, what do we get? We get the ability to rapidly convert that data into high quality evidence, publication grade. You can send a question in as simple as, hey, for my patient, drug A or drug B, what's the evidence? And we can provide an answer to you in under a day in the form of a high quality publication grade evidence level publication. We also do that with incredible transparency. So which patients went into the study and what statistical methods were used. We use the top grade methods on all of that. Because of our install structure, we also sit on about 200 million patients worth of healthcare data today across dozens of institutions, partners like Stanford, the Mayo Clinic and others. And that allows us to provide access to insights and evidence from data without data changing hands. And lastly, we've had thousands of questions from the point of care questions that maybe your caregivers are asking as well. And the first day that we install on your data stack, in your cloud, in your IT framework, 
we'll rerun those studies. And very often, these same studies are the ones that were used to drive ROI, find things like opportunities for pharmacy savings or care and quality uh, improvement. And by doing that, the first day you install this technology, Geneva, you're actually going to create ROI for your institution, as well as what comes from automation further out. This is a summary of what goes into Geneva. First, there's the Green Button Consult, which was first created at Stanford University. A physician can press the green button, type a couple of sentences, just like they're talking to a colleague, and they'll get back a full study answering their question in under a day and with Chatter WD now in minutes. At Alexandria, you get access to a library of content, existing studies, or clinical trial designs or publications that can be replicated on your data. So your data is here, we replicate it, and now you have evidence-based studies on your data that localizes that evidence to your institution. There's a lot of important data activation here. The one thing I can tell you we do differently than others, we are the only group that will go on the hook contractually for you to get anything out of your data stack. We offer a 48-hour SLA on any request sent to us. And that's because we believe so firmly in the system we've built and its speed, quality, and automation. And lastly, the Evidence Network. We have other partners we're here with that we work with on this, but over 200 million patients today. So sometimes you have a question, your data is the right data source. Other times you want to use data out on that network, and we make that available. We just launched last fall an application called ChatterWD, and we all talk a lot about LLMs at a conference like this. What concerns me about LLMs is that their accuracy and hallucination rate may be inappropriate for certain medical decisions. It's great for some things, not for others. What we've done with ChatterWD is make sure that the automation we have that's running a study like you would run in research is publication and research quality grade. But we built an LLM experience on that. That means you can talk to your database without worrying you're going to risk hallucination and data analysis. Uh, we have upcoming publications on this. I'd stay tuned. Very exciting. It also means that any user at the point of care can ask a question with just a couple of sentences and in under three minutes get a complete study back on thousands of patients just like the patient they have. Uh, please click the QR or check it out. We're signing up beta users as we speak. If we think about this in terms of your own IT infrastructure and data stack, I think a lot of people use the same words, so it's good to try and be clear about where ours sits. Um, and we call Geneva an OS very particularly, in particular because it builds on what you've already built. Many health systems have source data systems. Those have been enriched or maybe enhanced by NLP. There's usually some ETL work that's happened to convert that to a common format and somewhere there's a relational database. There are then a series of steps that Geneva encompasses that enable knowledge discovery and evidence generation, and often these are fragmented. With Geneva, they come in one pack, they install locally, straight from the AWS marketplace into your existing cloud infrastructure, and they feed downstream through user experiences to users and to other reporting metrics you might need. This layer of automation here takes up and occupies the space of honestly usually millions of dollars of consulting and build out and comes day one with a contractual SLA on the output. This is very unique. It's been built over 10 years and been developed originally within Stanford and since by us. Ultimately, what does this mean? This means we're solving for short-term infrastructure needs, we're reducing staff costs and increasing and speeding up the turnaround time to output and it allows evidence to become the transactional layer not just data, but evidence in value-based care models and related payment models. Research institutions can dramatically accelerate research. Instead of research projects on healthcare data taking months or years in some cases, it can happen in days and minutes. This is a dramatic acceleration to your research enterprise and to your young researchers. Um, it also means that developers can build on this stack. Through API layer access, now you can ensure the quality of output here, consistency and transparency, and build your own applications on top. And again, we are the only technology that offers a contractual guarantee of output turnaround time. And that is a very unique 
strong bet on what we know works really well. Our basic technology and what we do is combined into three parts, but it's simply understood as this. We developed our own database structure. We built knowledge graphs. We built our own query language called TQL. Why do we do all this work? Because this is the only way to ensure consistent output and speed and automation on this process. We also automate the statistical pipeline that's commonly used in evidence generation. And fundamentally what we're doing is this is normally three to five people every time somebody wants to run a question, we're reducing it down to a single interface and again with very rapid turnaround time. Well, how does this work on technical deployment? We all have to have an architecture diagram and here's ours. You'll have your existing systems of data, your EMR systems, your operational, maybe even genomics and others. That might already exist in a healthcare data warehouse like uh, AWS Health Data Lake. Our technology installs right inside that cloud with three major components here of Geneva, Workbench, Advanced Cohorting Engine, and the Common Data Model, and interfaces directly with Amazon applications. So no data has to move, there's no big IT project here, there's no new cloud, there's no data moving around, it stays right where it is. And then that's accessed through our interfaces by both our clinical and data science team as well as your users, even through the EMR when that's desired. <coughs> In terms of the value of this, we're doing the hard work of data standardization. There doesn't need to be a separate project to put your data in OMOP to work with us. We will do that for you. It's up to 50 times faster querying of this very data. And again, the result of that is a speed to value, acceleration, and offset of headcount required. Having the templatized and published study designs and statistical methods means you can trust what's coming out of this. We've had over 50 of these studies go on for publication. We have 100% peer review success rate. This should be one of the standards we use when we're determining how to generate high quality evidence. Ultimately, in addition, the first day we install this, we'll rerun those thousands of studies. Very often, those can be handed over to your policy teams, pop health, pharmacy, clinical and quality, be used to make policy changes relevant to your institution the first day. So we can use the existing rails of your institution to optimize for cost and for clinical quality. In life sciences, we also work with them. We sit atop the existing data infrastructure that they have. They already buy a significant amount of data. We can sit right on those very data types. And again, now you can ask questions of multiple data sets at the same time with the same turnaround time. So now it's not about just data acquisition. It's about the speed to insight and evidence you create off of it. And that has a direct effect on your ability to generate those insights rapidly and also offset complex staffing models. This is a summary of our solution as well as the user experiences involved. So Geneva is the core technology that gets you access to the evidence network as well as regulatory and compliance functions around GXP and data fitness scoring which helps you evaluate which data set is right for which question. Then we enable user experiences. So ChatterWD is our LLM interface. In under three minutes, you can generate a novel evidence study using that interface. Green button includes a clinician who can be made available to consult clinicians and discuss the results if that's desired. Alexandria is access to over 10,000 novel studies, again, rerun locally and growing every day. And our community, we're finding now that researchers and peers Clinicians are collaborating using these tools. How, what better way to spread an idea than to be able to share evidence through this? We also have a tool called Craft. This is where we take evidence generation into trial emulation. So, hey, there's somebody ran a clinical trial, great. How would that clinical trial look on our population? We have the ability to pre-program that in day one. That can be used to optimize not only the evidence from that trial to localize it, but also uh, design that trial in a better way or even emulate trial recruitment. Workbench are our power tools. So for your informaticians and data scientists that want a little more control, you want to pull some levers themselves, they have access to these tools. And increasingly both Aqueduct and our API functions mean that you can actually develop on top of this infrastructure. So Geneva serves as the quality and automation layer these user experiences are designed for clinicians, researchers, and power users. 
mean that you can access this scaled evidence in a great way. In terms of quality, I want to talk about this for a second. We're in the year of AI and LLMs in healthcare, and I think there's a lot of discussion about regulation and about how quality should be judged. I think AI and LLMs are great tools, and you can see how we use them to enhance user experience. But fundamentally, if we're talking about evidence for care, I think you have to hold yourself to the standard of publication and research quality grade, and that's what we've automated with Geneva. This initiative, which began within Stanford 10 years ago, we've been published on dozens of times. All of our methods are clearly published in things like NEJM, uh, JAMIA, JAMA, and so forth. We've also been referenced in front of Congress, the National Library of Medicine, who originally funded this. And fundamentally, the question we should be asking ourselves about AI and LLMs, do we trust what is coming out of this? And is the quality right for what we're using it for? And we ensure research and evidence-grade quality on everything that comes out of us. You can see many of our publications here and reference others that, that we have coming out. But again, that's a bet we make. I think in this time period, we will look back and say, yes, automation is good, but let's make sure when we're using it for clinical decision-making that we're using the same quality of evidence. What types of things can we help with? And what types of things does having greater evidence help with? One, we have rising operating costs across healthcare, labor costs, decreases in federal funding, other economic pressure. We have clinician burnout and turnover. We have throughput of care challenges. Length of stay is a common topic for us, as well as de decreasing patient engagement. And the patient cost of care is increasing. So how do we help with these things? One, when we go to make decisions on how to cut these operating costs, it should not be weeks and months for us to figure out what the data says. You should be able to get a clear answer with high quality and evidence out in minutes or days. And you should be able to trust that analysis in a way that you would trust a publication. We build great user experience because clinicians should have this benefit too. If you have clinicians trying to decide what care to give, they should have a great user experience to do that. And I'm proud to say we have an NPS or net promoter score in the 40s. Now, just to put that in context, most health tech is in the high teens. We're up with Adidas. People like using this. It's efficient. It feels like a clinician's consulting a colleague. That allows them to do their daily job easily, and that's a goal for us. We can improve quality metric and benchmarking. And again, being able to decide how to deploy these policies is a critical piece of what we do. And lastly, we can elevate outcomes with lower cost. When we install and rerun the studies within our system the first day, we're usually able to create multiple millions of dollars in ROI savings, hard dollar cost savings from that evidence. That should be the expectation with any technology in this space. And lastly, the benefits in action, right? Um, how do you implement this? You can achieve a number of these goals through evidence. The key to this is how do we automate high quality evidence out of the data stack and do it uh, in a way that saves us money. I expect when I talk to health system execs for us to be cost neutral in the first year, if not better, on hard dollar cost savings. And in life sciences, production of evidence, medical research, and optimization of R&D is a direct dollar value to them. We're the automation first player in this space. How am I doing on time? We don't know, so I'm gonna keep going. We'll talk a bit about our AWS relationship and why this has worked so well. As many people know, AWS has invested heavily in the data infrastructure in our space. And I think we've now reached the place where the application layer can work well on that. We're designed for a federated network, right, that already exists. Health systems already have their data in the cloud. What they want to be able to do is not just store it there, but actually get value out of it. And that's where we've focused. So make it low friction to install, less risk to uh, IT and security, while at the same time enabling users to get high value automation out of it. Our users really love us. Uh, we feature users on our website and in our social all the time. But every day we get a question from a clinician that is an amazing story. 
Um, we have stories up here around treating IBD with biologics, key questions in radiation oncology, user uh, stories around obstetrics and anesthesia. And every one of these stories, there's a patient at mind. Um, and there are stories that come up every day that enable us to not only change the care for that patient, but generate the evidence to change a policy, which means you can actually change it for everybody. Um, and I think fundamentally what we see is that clinicians, policymakers in these institutions have a hunger for this evidence. They want more of it. And if they have it, they can make a great decision. Um, I tell a story that came up the other day. There was a, a sort of adolescent uh, male child who came in. He had distal nerve pain in all four uh, limbs. The neurology team uh, at Stanford in this case looked at that and said, well, this could be early onset MS, okay? Not a great thing, obviously, and one that required a $30,000 workup to confirm, including imaging and spinal tap, big impact for the patient. Before they ran all those workups, they said, well, we have Atropos. Let me just ask Atropo, have we ever seen a patient like this before? And what happened and, you know, what were the treatments? We ran a study there in about four hours, okay? We found that there are at Stanford about 200 other patients that look just like this patient. Turned out that almost 80% of them had a latent viral infection. They'd had a viral infection a few weeks before. And this was a lingering side effect of that viral infection. So the neurology team said, well, that's great insight. Okay, so maybe we should give this kid corticosteroids, send him home. If he's better the next day, we've solved it. If he has it, we'll do the workup. And lo and behold, that's what they did. They gave that child corticosteroids, uh, called the parents the next day and said it's completely resolved. Didn't have to do a $30,000 workup. Child and child's family didn't have to go through a, a, a complicated workup that would have been quite scary to do. We saved the health system money, the patient and family were happier, and the child had a better outcome. All because we could generate that evidence so rapidly. And it's that speed to insight, speed to evidence that happens every day at Atropos. It's one of the great parts of working here of the stories you hear every day. And that went from individual patient to now a review policy that exists around the neurology department for these type of cases. So you can take it from individual case to policy with this type of evidence. Hard dollar savings because it's that type of year. Everybody wants to know the numbers. This is a publication we published in the spring. This is a retrospective looking at an institution, AMC, using us for a year. Their numbers, they saved over $3 million in the first year using us. If you have evidence for care, you will make a better decision, it will lead to better outcomes and greater cost savings and optimization. Please check out the publication. I think I'm nearly at time. Thanks everybody for the time today.